Let's talk about calories. A lot of people use the word calories, and I'm not sure they really know what it means, but you guys should, because you've taken a chemistry class, maybe a physics class. What are calories? Calories are a measure of energy. How much energy? The amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. 1,000 calories is a kilocalorie, or capital C calorie. Now, on food labels, the calories you see are actually kilocalories. Those are capital C. So when it says that a soda, like a Coke or a Pepsi, has whatever they are, I don't know, 100 calories, that's actually 100,000 calories. You could raise 100,000 grams of water, 1 degree Celsius. Uh, try that. That should be keep you busy for the rest of the afternoon. Fats contain about 9 kilocalories per gram. Carbs and proteins, about 4 kilocalories per gram. So, sugar and alcohol are empty calories. They have few nutrients. I think alcohol are like 7 kilocalories per gram. So, uh, you know, nice insets there on the left comparing broccoli and, and brownie. They both fill your stomach to the same degree, but uh, quite different amounts of calories and fat. And then lower right, look at uh, 200 calories. Look what you get for apples and kiwi fruit versus bacon and butter. I mean, yeah, I know it's bacon, fine. But still, um, in terms of remember filling the stomach, what the heck? Apple is a great way to fill your stomach without getting a lot of calories. Nutrients. These are things that we put into our body for growth, for repair, just for maintenance. Macronutrients, things we need in large quantities. And the three big macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs. You need those. We're going to talk more about those coming up, about you know, what they do and roughly how much you need. There are these so-called recommended daily allowances, which are kind of fictitious numbers, but we'll take a look at them. Micronutrients, minerals, and vitamins, things needed only in small amounts. Uh, you don't need tons of sodium. You don't need as much sodium as you do protein, all right? Essential nutrients are those that you cannot synthesize. So certain things your body can make, other things you have to put into your body. Minerals, you can't make sodium. Sodium is an element. You can't make potassium. You can't make calcium. You have to put those into your body. Those are earth things. Vitamins, you can make some vitamins, but a lot of others you have to consume. Nine amino acids, they, the number's kind of iffy here. Eight or nine amino acids. Kind of depends. Some amino acids, you can say they're two different amino acids. You can say they're different forms of the same one. Two fatty acids, that's the last I heard. Again, depending on the way you consider them, sometimes you can say two of them are different or two of them are just different forms of the same thing. The number is not important. Although, amino acids, about how many amino acids does your body use? Do you know? Let's say 20 to 22. Once again, depends on how you name them. The point here is that about half of the amino acids you need, you can make, but the other half you have to put into your body. And fatty acids you also have to put into your body, the so-called omega-3 fatty acids. We'll talk about those coming up. And how do you find real food at the supermarket? As many of you probably know, you're supposed to stay around the edges. So does it have a label? No. What is left there? Well, well done. You're at the produce aisle or the meat counter. Bakery probably is out there as well. So, does it have a label? Yes, watch out, especially if it's making health claims. Was it ever alive? No. Well, you're probably in the home improvement aisle. Grab light bulbs for the garage. Bottom line here is that, um, you know, in terms of just healthy eating, kids, I'm telling you, you know, vegetables, plants, fruits, good stuff, nuts, good stuff. Once you start going down the aisles, you're into the processed foods, and they're likely to have a lot of sugar a lot of fat, and a lot of salt. And those are three things that you're probably already getting enough of. Okay, which statement is false? CCK stimulates hunger, vitamins are micronutrients, most of your body weight determined by exercise and diet, proteins, macronutrients, most people in the U.S. overweight or obese. Figure out the answer, pause the video, come back when you're ready. And there we are. Yes, CCK stimulates, what was that word again? Satiety, you feel full. Let's take a look at carbs. Carbs found in three places in the body. 
So glycogen is the stored form of glucose. Remember, plants store glucose as starch. Animals store glucose as glycogen. You have around 325 grams in your muscles, 125 in your liver. Don't take those numbers to the bank. Moses did not come down off the mountain with those written on the tablets. Those are just approximates. The big point here is that the, the glycogen that's in your muscles can only be used by those muscles, whereas the glycogen in the liver can be converted back to glucose and then dumped into the bloodstream. Remember beta-2 adrenergic receptors, sympathetic stimulation, raise the ATP so that you can kill the chupacabra. Blood glucose, 20 grams, so that's the third place. You have some blood, uh, some glucose floating in your blood, um, providing your cells with the glucose they need to make ATP. Most carbs are fuel, all right? They do a variety of things, but in general, what carbs are for is for making ATP. Oxygen and glucose make ATP, aerobic respiration. All right, neurons, red blood cells really want to have glucose. Remember, red blood cells have no organelles, so they have to do um, anaerobic fermentation, and they produce lactic acid as the byproduct. Um, neurons really want to have glucose. They don't like to use other energy sources. Some other organs, like skeletal muscles, heart muscle, they're happy with fatty acids, but neurons, not. Neurons want glucose. Sugars can also be structural components. So nucleic acids, glycoproteins, glycolipids, ATP, sugars can uh, cell surface markers and so on. But you know, for our purposes now in metabolism, sugars are mostly um, what we're uh, talking about in terms of serving as fuel. Blood glucose carefully regulated by insulin and glucagon. So consider here, um, these are two hormones. We're going to talk a lot more about them later. We call them antagonistic hormones because they do the opposite of each other. Insulin lowers blood glucose. Glucagon raises blood glucose. This is homeostasis, sports fans. This is what your body does in order to maintain stable blood glucose levels. Blood glucose is too low. Well, pancreas releases glucagon, raises it up. Blood glucose too high, pancreas releases insulin, bring it down. Keep that in mind. I want you to start knowing that now. That's going to become more and more important as we go on. Look over on the left, carb, complex carbs. That's what you want to eat because complex carbs have other things in them, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and so on. That's a rich food source. Get over to the stuff on the right, pancakes, syrup, and candy, and cake. Those are what they call the empty calories. They don't have really other, many other nutrients. Fruits also are very simple, but they at least they have pectins and things. So where do you get carbs from your diet? Monosaccharides, glucose, galactose, and fructose. Those are the three simple sugars. Liver converts galactose and fructose to glucose. So outside of the hepatic portal system, the only blood sugar we see is glucose. That's why, like in a hospital, you got somebody on a drip um, what do you have that have to the drip in terms of sugar? Just glucose. That's all you need because that's normally the only sugar that's in your blood anyway. Normal blood sugar is 70 to 100 milligrams. You'll see different numbers on this, different books. Some say now 70 to 110. I don't care. The important point here is that there is a relatively narrow range of appropriate, appropriate blood sugar. And you should know what word do we use if your blood sugar drops too low? You would be hypoglycemic. If your blood sugar goes too high, you would be hyperglycemic. Disaccharides like table sugar, sucrose, maltose, lactose, um, that's where two of the simpler sugars, glucose, galactose, and fructose, are stuck together. You can see that in the bottom left-hand diagram there. Sucrose is a glucose plus a fructose, and so on. I don't really care. I'm not going to quiz you on that. I just want you to know that we've got the simple sugars, the monosaccharides, and then we start going to the disaccharides and the polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, starch, glycogen, cellulose, not really an important nutrient, although uh, it is a part of fiber. Nearly all dietary carbs come from plants. You get very few of your carbs from meat. And here you go, complex carbohydrates. How do I know that my experience of consciousness is the same as others? Why are we here? What is my purpose? What is the meaning of life? Those are complex carbs. Today, by the time the average children in a developed country turns eight years old, they've had more sugar in their lives than the average person did in their entire lifetime just one century ago. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but it, it's, it's essentially true.
the food these days, everything is just loaded with sugar. My grandmother grew up on a farm in Iowa. To them, having cake or a piece of candy was like a rare treat. And so many foods that you don't think of as being high in sugars are. Like some of those tasty crackers, check the label. All the, all the breakfast cereals, oh my God, those things are just swimming in sugar. So fiber, important. Fiber is like a scrubber for your intestines. There you see Phil Hartman in the upper right-hand corner. Colon blow. It was a Saturday Night Live skit many years ago. Pretty funny. Fibrous material resists digestion, and that's okay. Water-soluble fiber like pectins, those, are, those will actually lower blood cholesterol and LDL levels. A lot of those are found in fruits. Water-insoluble fiber, cellulose, lignin, absorbs water in the intestines, softens the stool, gives it bulk, speeds transit time. Healthy digestion requires fiber. You need dietary fiber. Look in the lower left there. You've got the various foods with fiber. Eat foods with fiber, kids. Without fiber, you're more likely to have intestinal troubles. You really are. And there you go. Toro Week, the Grand Canyon. That's where my soul lives. I've been going there for 50 years. That was right after it rained. It's been a stormy day. Grand Canyon and stormy weather is an incredibly magnificent place. Okay, I'll see you again in Metabolism PowerPoint number three.